Hey folks, Azure Cosmos DB Live TV. Welcome. I'm your host, Mark Brown. Uh, we've got a special guest with us this week, Paul. Uh, how are you, sir? I'm doing well, thanks. Hey, Mark, how are you? I'm doing fine. Uh, just enjoying another rainy day down in Southern California. Uh, where are you based out of, by the way? I don't know if we've ever... Yeah, I'm up here in the uh, Redmond Redmond office on, and, okay. uh, in Seattle specifically right now. And we've we've also got some, some nice Seattle rain. Uh, yeah, well, know. it is April, so uh, almost what you can expect. Although down here, I'm not expecting this at all. It's been, <laughs> it's, <laughs> yeah. been, it's been rather wet, so this isn't uh, this isn't what they promised. Uh, we're going to talk about something pretty cool. I came across. I don't remember exactly how uh, we bumped into each other, but it doesn't matter. Uh, you uh, created something that I found to be pretty cool, and something that uh, users tend to struggle with, which is uh, we have a, a consistency model we call session, right? Which is a, a different kind of consistency model than what you would maybe expect with if you were strong or eventual uh, in that it uses this, this token uh, that we've got. And we make that the default because it's frankly, it makes kind of things easy and it gives you kind of what you would expect, I guess, if you're trying to maintain uh, consistency. Uh, but you did something that's, I think, quite cool uh, in that you made this work in a in a scenario uh, that a lot of users come into, uh, but uh, have a hard time kind of engineering out of. So um, so I, let's just kind of dive right in. Are you, well, you're going to show us some slides, uh, just talk about uh, kind of setting the stage for uh, what I'm kind of alluding to. Uh, and then we're going to get into kind of the thing you built uh, for this. Uh, do I got that right? Absolutely. Yeah, that's a that's a great summary. And, you know, my team and okay. I here at Microsoft followed a pretty similar story of what you described. Like we were working with Cosmos um, and we had session consistency on. And, um, you know, one, one day it just it surprised us a little bit. Um, and after that, I you know dug a little bit deeper and, um, and and here we are. So I'm excited to share some of the findings and, and how you can um, how you can learn uh, and get the most value out of it for your applications. Um, cool. So to start, um, we heard a little bit already. Uh, thanks for that intro, Mark, about touching on session consistency. Uh, I'm going to dive just a little bit deeper to give a give a refresher for folks um, who haven't been reading or talking about consistency levels and distributed databases uh, in a while. So we'll touch on that um, for a few minutes, and then after that, we'll uh, we'll jump right into a quick demo, um, which shows kind of how. It's someone starting with an ASP.NET Core uh, app using Cosmos DB and session consistency, um, which you might see. Um, and then um, we'll see what happens when you take a really simple app and then scale it up um, on Kubernetes with a few more containers um, and what might be a little bit surprising there. Um, and from there, we'll, we'll peel back kind of the, the covers on, on what happened during the demo. Um, and then we get to the, the fun part, we get to, um, apply what we learned and yep. I'll have a, I'll have a neat uh, little library to share at the end that makes it really easy to get, uh, to get the most, uh, out of okay. session consistency. Sounds good. Yeah. So let's, uh, let's go ahead and start with consistency. So when I talk about, um, consistency, um, in a distributed system, kind of what we're talking about the way, the way that I like to think about it is, um, uh, let's say we start with a, uh, a write to the database from, from some workload. Um, and that could be a create, uh, replace, upsert, upsert in, in Cosmos DB terms. Uh, and then right after that, uh, just after that write request, we do a read. And that read request, maybe it's coming from that same customer workload. workload. Maybe it's com coming from a different workload. Uh, maybe it's in the same region. Maybe it's in a different region. Um, but all these factors could be at play. And when we think about consistency, uh, we're asking, what does the database promise about how up to date will that read be um, across these different um, parameters? And this is an important question to think about because in the in the cloud, it's really easy for us to add computing capacity. We we have so many we have so much computing resources available at our fingertips, um, and as we add more and more computers to solve our problems it gets increasingly expensive and complicated to keep all those computers in exact lockstep. Yep. Um, so if we can look carefully at our the problem space that we're solving for our customers 
and think about which parts of it, is it okay if we give a result that's maybe a little bit out of date? Um, that gives us some really powerful tools to reduce costs and increase performance uh, for our customers. So when we think about consistency levels, um, there's a spectrum. Um, and when that, that spectrum goes from weak to strong, when we talk about strong consistency, that means every result is perfectly up to date. So that read that we just talked about returns that right every single time. Um, there's nothing wrong with the answer ever. Um, and on the weeks, on the other end of the spectrum, we have weak. And basically for weak consistency, we have very few guarantees. Uh, the only real promise we get is that at some point in the future, um, reads will start to reflect the write that just happened. Um, but we don't know when, we don't know what order it might, one request might see it, another one might not, and then it can, it can flip flop. Um, and this, this kind of uh, dichotomy between weak and strong is very common among the industry in, in database solutions. The Cosmos in particular is pretty unique because it offers a spectrum of these consistency levels. Um, so of course it offers the strong and eventual consistency, kind of just what I talked about. So these are the Cosmos terms um, for the consistency levels you can, you can select. Um, and then there's a couple more in the middle. And all these are pretty interesting. I'm not gonna spend very much time here going into these, um, all the different options. There's a really great documentation you can find online that has some um, nice animated diagrams that show you the implications of all these. Um, but for this talk, we're gonna zoom in just on session consistency. Um, and this idea that it gives a balance between um, the strong consistency mode, when you have a kind of user-centric um, session-based application, you can get some elements of that strong consistency behavior, um, but you can also save some cost um, um, when you don't for, for different parts of your application that don't necessarily need um, strong consistency all the time. I think it's a, uh, and one thing I do want to point out too is, um, you know, all of those other consistency models that are within there are all based around data themselves, right? Like in strong, uh, the guarantee itself is that data is completely consistent across the entire distributed system within there, right? And then bounded staleness, same, it's around the data itself. And then the other weaker ones. Consistency is different in that it's a client-based uh, model, which is, really fundamentally different than other kind of, the, the, than the guarantees you would normally expect uh, with that. The other thing I want to point out too, and you have this correctly identified, is it's not, the, 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 the guarantee is not strong consistency, it's read your own rights, right? Like you could still have inconsistent data across a system um, with a session consistency model, but the, 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 the trick or the fun part or whatever it is you want to call it, uh, is that read your own right guarantee and how we do it. Uh, within within Cosmos. So anyway, I just in case people are confused <laughs> how this or just don't understand these these concepts. Uh, I wanted to call out how this is that consistency model is, is completely different. Yeah, that's exactly right. And for this type of for session consistency, the type of app that will really benefit a lot from this is when you have apps that are really focused around kind of a um, individual entity like a user or some kind yeah. of client session. Yeah. Um, and so that way you can get within a single user, say browsing a website in a session, um, you can get these the benefits of the stronger consistency and they can see the things that they've done um, are really concrete and up to date. Um, but maybe the, the things that other users have done, maybe the posts that have appeared on a social media app, um, maybe it's okay if those uh, haven't shown up yet for, for a different user. But for and the posts that that user did, that they created, they show up immediately. This is exactly right. I mean, and you nailed it again. That's the the scenario is is I, I just want to see what I wrote in, right? And the cost settings you're talking about is both of those stronger consistency levels is a two replica read. So you're gonna pay basically twice as much for getting that data consistent. And as Cap Theorem is uh, long to say, <laughs> if you go with a stronger consistency or a strong consistency like that, availability goes down. So the other spectrum here is availability uh, across this consistency model. And this one, again, nicely threads the needle because you get that what feels like in strong consistency. It's not real, but it, is, it feels like it and it behaves like that. Uh, but you maintain that availability as well, uh, which is absolutely a lot of, which is why a lot of people use Cosmos, right? So 
Absolutely, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so let's go ahead and start um, putting some of these concepts into practice. So um, I've got a, a, a demo to share with you, which is kind of an example of a, um, a simple, a really simple website um, that we can kind of connect this back to the idea of like a, like a social media app. But this one is just going to be um, just changing the, the value of a counter. Um, but so let's look at kind of the high level architecture before we jump into um, the demo that I've got for you. So um, I mentioned that this app, um, it keeps track of a counter. Um, it has two APIs, one API just to get the value of the current counter, um, and then another API to increment it. Um, to just read the value, add one, and then write it back. Um, and we're going to be running this demo on a Kubernetes cluster on my desktop. And um, it's behind a ingress controller so that's going to be doing load balancing at the HTTP layer. Um, so that's going to be an important point. So just put a pin in that for now. Remember that, how the load balancer works. And then behind the load balancer, we've got uh, one or more instances of, of, of our app. And for this demo, um, we're going to start out with just one instance of our app. So say we're, you know, it's a, it's a new product, trying to find, uh, maybe it's a startup, we're trying to find product market fit. Um, and we're starting with, with just one instance. Um, let's go ahead and see, uh, see what that looks like. So this is the, I've got a little program here that's just going to uh, hit the, the two APIs I talked about a bunch of times in a row so we can see what happens. Um, and it will just read the current value from the counter and then it increments it and then writes it back. Um, and it just does that same pattern a few times in a row just so we can, we can see what happens. Um, so here's a read and then, uh, then there's the increment and this is the value we got in the response from the write operation. So we know that this is what got written to the database. And then we just have a bunch of reads. So this is kind of like, if we connect that back to that social media app example, uh, if I created a post and then I refresh the page one or two or three times, um, you know, these are the subsequent reads that the user would see. Uh, and we can see with running with one container, this looks really great. Like everything is, Whenever I increment the value, like it's highlighted in green on my screen here when the value is correct according to that, that write. So when a read is up to date with respect to that write that we just did, it shows up as green. And you can see everything here is perfect. Like it's doing a great job. Um, when you say container, so our, you mean a Kubernetes container, right? That's correct. Yeah, Kubernetes okay. uh, container. Single, single um, client instance. Got it. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Single replica in, in our. There's nothing like overloading. We don't do that at Microsoft. Overload <laughs> terms for things. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Who does that? Sorry. Yeah. Um, okay. Yeah. So we've got our app. It's and it's it's working great, right? So now, um, now we've got we're we're getting customers, right? We're getting more traffic, or or we get a new requirements to say, hey, you know, one instance of our app isn't good enough. We want. Um, we want more resilience in case of like a data center or an availability zone going down or just even a node in our cluster going down. So we want to have copies of our app. We want to horizontally scale it. Um, so let's jump over to Kubernetes dashboard here on my local machine. And we'll just scale this, scale this up to four instances. Um, and since it's on my machine, that'll happen almost instantly. So yeah, we're scaled up right now. Um, and then we can jump back over I'll just run the I'll just run the same uh, same demo one more time, and we'll see it's a little sluggish to start up because we've got some more containers that are warming up, so it'll take it a moment, um, and it's it's spreading those requests across all these new containers, and we'll see what happens. So we're seeing a lot of things. We're still seeing a lot of things that are up to date, but now like look at look at some of this these yellow results here happen when we got an old value back. Um, so we're still doing exactly what we just did a moment ago, but sometimes we read the right value, we read the up-to-date value, but sometimes we see the old one. So that's not as good as anymore. Our, our consistency level in, in practice has, has weakened a bit. We went from something that looked really strong, uh, and it kind of got weaker. And the only thing we did was scale up our app. We had one container before, um, and now we have four. And now suddenly, you know, our user experience kind of isn't as good anymore. So this is where we get to start peeling back the curtain on how session consistency works. How does that work? 
<laughs> yeah. So let's let's get into that. Like, what is what happened in this demo, and how does session consistency play into it? So in session consistency, from that earlier definition, we saw that everything is focused around this idea of a session. Um, and it's basically a series of interactions with the database um, that Cosmos will apply these guarantees for. And in order to keep track of that session, uh, Cosmos defines a session based around the idea of a, of a token, a session token. So whenever you issue a, whenever an application issues a write to Cosmos, it will generate a new session token. And then it will include that session token in the response to that write request. Um, and you can take that session token and pass it into a read, a subsequent read from your application to Cosmos. And then if when Cosmos receives that session token back, it'll act as if that read is in the same session as the write. And the, the guarantees that we talked about earlier attach. So we want to keep that session token flowing between our writes and reads for them to all be in the same session. And what we saw when we had a single container, we saw really good behavior. We saw really strong consistency with just a single container. And it turns out the Cosmos DB SDK is, is doing some smart things for us behind the scenes. It will automatically track session tokens for you within a single instance of the SDK. So you just don't even have to think about it. But on the flip side, the SDK can't do that for you when you have more than one instance of the SDK, more than one instance of the app. It, it doesn't have logic inside it. It's not smart enough to like share session tokens for you behind the scenes between different application instances. They're just kept in RAM. So in practice, when we had that single replica, the session tokens all went um, between Cosmos DB and that single instance of the um, of our application, and it all worked out fine because all the customer requests um, went there as well. But as soon as we started adding, and, and we can see that from this um, from this diagram, all the reads looked really good, and this is showing uh, a few different, like the top row here, showing writes that are happening in a session, and then some examples of what reads would see also in the same session. And you can see that they're all in lockstep. The reads all see everything that happened in the writes um, immediately. And because we had that single container, the single SDK instance, and the SDK helping us out, all the reads benefit from the, these guarantees. But when we, when we just scale up our application, we add some more containers. Now we're creating more instances of the SDK. And each SDK only knows about its own session tokens. So in practice, we've now created more than one session with the database, but it's one session per instance of our app. Uh, and that means earlier when we talked about the, the load balancer being an, an important point, when we have that HTTP load balancer, it's spreading requests from our client round robin to all these different containers. So any given request from a customer can land on an arbitrary container. And that helps us with, you know, uh, Make, scaling up our application, ensuring that each container gets an even amount of traffic. But in practice, that also means that customer requests will land on different containers now than they did before um, that don't have that session token from the right that just happened on a different container. So that brings us now when we have more containers, our customer reads, they land in, that, in this bottom line of, of this uh, example, where you can see that they will eventually reflect the right um, but it's not guaranteed to, uh, to be up to date in any given moment. We saw that inconsistency in the demo earlier. So, okay, so how do we fix that? We want, we want to scale up horizontally because we get a lot of benefits from it, but we also want to take advantage of session consistency. So in order to get the best of everything, what we really want is we want to take these, um, our customer requests, we want for an individual customer an individual client of our API, we want all of those reads and writes to still be in the same session according to Cosmos DB. And connecting that back earlier, so we know Cosmos tracks sessions via these tokens, that means we need to include the session token. Um, we need to send that all the way back to the customer. So when the customer issues another read, they can include the session token in that read request. And then we guarantee from the Cosmos, um, from the Cosmos side 
that that read will happen in the same session as the write that the customer just issued. I just want to say uh, a couple a couple things. First of all, um, uh, I've had customers in the past ask me like, "Why can't you support session token across SDK instances?" Like, like could I have a a place where I could keep those and update and read them? And the answer is uh, yes, you can do it, uh, but no, you shouldn't. Uh, and there's a couple of reasons why. Uh, one is uh, uh, by creating a central place for these things, you've created a spot basically in, a in your in your design uh, because that thing's down, then uh, you have nothing. You, you have you basically now have eventual consistency. You have none, no consistency whatsoever. Uh, two, this is just bad. Like again, you cannot scale out anything that you've got. You're going to create a resource contention on a single resource, whereas that's kind of the antithesis of why you would build distributed systems in the first place, which is I want to run lots of things in parallel, right? And maintain availability around that, right? So it kind of it kind of goes against everything you should be doing if you're if you're building for the cloud, uh, basically, right? Which is I want to build for scale, I want to build for resilience, uh, I want to build for you know and, and consistency and keep all those things together, right? I want to be uh, you know make well, eyes wide open choices from a PAC LC theorem uh, point of view uh, that I possibly can. And flowing those things back and forth and making them basically independent of each other uh, is the right way. Uh, and so I just want I, I had to point that out because it's super important if you people have not uh, understood at this point why we're, why we're sitting here talking about this. Uh, it is It comes down to this. And the thing you've built uh, is, uh, I, I just love it. Right. Because you've, you've basically, and I, oh, all right, I won't steal your thunder. I'm going to let you keep talking and then I want you to show this thing. Okay. Yeah. And I think that was, that was a really good call out that you made. Like, why can't the SDK do more? And even if, even if we tried, right. Even if, you know, the, the sharp folks at Cosmos DB tried to do that, you very quickly run into these really challenging distributed systems trade-offs because if you wanted to have a single place with all the session tokens, well, does that thing have to be strongly consistent? Um, and if it is, then you're paying, you're, you're losing all the the, the you're, cost you're, and performance benefits that you just wanted to get by using this feature in the first. You're going to take a hit for latency, basically. Yeah, right? exactly. Uh, so you you, right, you right, lose all these benefits. Right. Yeah, all these benefits we talked about earlier, you just immediately start losing them. And if it's not strongly consistent, if you allow the, the your containers or your SDK instances to gossip behind the scenes, well, then you're fully in. Um, eventually consistent land again. So yeah. again, you're losing the, the same benefit. So the you really do have to pass this token back to the customer in order to guarantee that they have that token up to date at the time they want to do the second read. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So this let's let's jump right in. So how do we can how do we actually fix this in our code? Um, so I'll start with a little bit of background on the um, on the SDK here, um, and we'll see that you know, how, how you can do it um, uh, yourself. And then I'll, I'll show you here in, in, in a second, a library that makes this a lot easier. So we've got the, um, this is the web app that I showed. Um, this is the server side of the demo that we just saw. So it's got our two controllers here. One of them just reads the current value for the counter from our database. And then the other one will increment it. Um, and we saw from a moment ago, our goal is we wanna get that session token from Cosmos, pass it back to our caller um, and then accept it in uh, the subsequent request. So we'll go to the right first because that's where the session token, token comes from. And the SDK makes it available on the response. So we can say var session token. Um, and I've got, I've got the GitHub Copilot helping me out a little bit here. We'll see how <laughs> helpful it ends up being. Um, that's it. Take whatever it, take whatever it suggests and ship it. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, and let's see, session token. So you can already see it's not being uh, super helpful with the, with the typos yeah. here. Um, and it, so it's the headers and then session. So this is where we get our session token from. So now we've got the session token. And then we want to send that back to our, um, to our customer. And you can certainly do that. Um, you can use the, um, there's a request, you can set like a um, cookies, you can set a cookie with it, just like that. Um, and this is, you know, this will work. And then we can do the same thing on the 
uh, on the read here, we can um, inside our options, we can do a new uh, item request options. And then we can just get the, the cookie, uh, get the session token out of the cookie. And this is the fundamental, this is one way of approaching um, this problem. And when we send the session token as a cookie, so that's for an HTTP client, it'll keep track of that. Or if it's a browser, it'll keep track of that. And then on the next request, it'll send that, um, that cookie back to us. And we can, we can get the value out uh, and pass it right back to the Cosmos SDK. Uh, and that will connect the flow just like we saw before. And this really quick example I, I showed you of on the write request, we set the cookie. And on the read request, we read the cookie. This will work, but it's also not super easy. Uh, if we wanted to take this idea and productionalize it, there's, there's more things that would come up, right? Like in this example, we're using the Cosmos SDK right from my controller. But in more interesting applications, that's not always the case. You might have a few different layers of code between your yep controller, the business logic, and finally, your, the Cosmos SDK. Um, you might be using more than one Cosmos account or database or container. Um, right now, we just got one cookie. And you know these are scoped. Uh, we need to be careful about these session token scoping because um, you know they, they vary by account, database, and container. Um, so and the idea is, too. Yeah, that's right. And the idea here is pretty yeah. simple, um, but actually doing it in practice is not, not all that easy. Um, so I'm actually going to undo these changes real quick, and I'll show you where uh, a library here can help us out. So with this library, we actually don't need to make any changes to our controllers to take advantage of it. So I just undid all those changes we just did. Um, and we're going to add. I'm not going to actually uncomment this line, but I'm going to show this is a package reference of how to pull in the library. Uh, right here, it's called Cosmos DB Extension Session Token ASP.NET Core. And we're going to pull in the um, beta 2 version there. And then I've got a few lines of code here that I've already set up that I'm just going to uncomment. So we add a few services to our dependency injection container. and this service will just bridge. Um, it'll help us keep track of session tokens per request that our ASP.NET Core web app is handling. And once we've got the services set up, we'll use those services with a wrapper around the Cosmos client object with this with session token creation call. And what this will do is it will watch all the API calls going to the Cosmos SDK and back. Um, and it will capture any session tokens that are SDK, that the SDK returns, um, and save them and associate them with the current HTTP request. Um, and then for any read requests that happen for an HTTP request, it will inject any session token that's available. And finally, in this example, so we want to use cookies to send those back to our, uh, our customer. And we'll add a middleware that connects everything uh, together here. So this middleware. Um, well, when we send a response to a customer, it'll see if there's a session Cosmos, one or more Cosmos session tokens associated with the current request. And it will send them out as, uh, it'll add them as cookies to the response. And if there's any incoming HTTP request from our customer that has the cookies on it, it will grab those cookies and add them to our service. So then um, any Cosmos session calls can benefit from it. So that was it. I just uncommented three lines here. Um, and we'll just save, and we'll go back to our server. And I'll just publish this container with those three line changes using the library. And so we publish the container. So then we'll jump back over to Kubernetes and restart our app. So that all of these um, get the new code using the library. OK, we're back up and running. And now we can go right back to where we were before. And I'll run the demo again. We'll see what happens.
So this time, you know, in the spirit of a, of a, of a demo, uh, it didn't quite work how we wanted. Uh, so it looks like that code change didn't stick. So let's try that one more time and make sure, uh, make sure that we really got uh, what we were looking for here. Um, so I'll just do a .NET clean. And yeah, this is all, all up to date. And then we'll do publish. Um, publish this. Yeah, it, it wouldn't be a demo without a hiccup. <laughs> It's the gremlins of uh, Cosmos DB live TV. Uh, this is, you're not the first <laughs> that's had, uh, that's run into these sorts of things during a live taping. Uh, live taping, that doesn't make sense. But we are pre-recorded, <laughs> but uh, that's okay. Um, we're watching you without a net, uh, so to speak. So let's see if we can get this sorted. Uh, it's still not sticking. So what I'm expecting to see, here, yeah. So what I'm expecting to see here is that we should see um, this client will tell us when it's getting cookies, um, and we see that the behavior um, works a lot nicer when it's when it's actually getting the cookies. Um, so want to re really want recycle to your containers, maybe or. That's what I was doing. I'm actually, I'm just gonna start really fresh here and clear out yep. my, my Git. Um, and what I'll do is um, clean. Build web API and then Publish. Oh, you know what? I know exactly what I did. So I'm using um, Minikube as my uh, Kubernetes host here. And there's actually a little, a little trick to it. It has its own Docker daemon. Um, so uh -huh. I actually need to tell it to publish to the right uh, Docker daemon. So my apologies okay. for, for getting that before. That's OK. Um, but I'm going to grab that real quick and paste it here. And why it just kept working is because um, I was publishing to my Docker desktop daemon. I need to tell it to switch to Minikube's version of Docker to do the to do the publish. That's okay, right? When uh, now viewers here just got a little extra knowledge, so it's perfectly fine. Yeah, exactly. That's that's one of the, <laughs> the things I learned about Minikube as a part of doing the setting up the demo. Uh, okay, so now we can go back and. Uh, restart this one more time, and we should be getting because we just updated the Minikube Docker instance. Then we should be getting our up to date uh, version of the app here. Okay. Um, and we'll go back to the demo client and do this one more time. And nice and slow, which is a good sign because it is a good sign. These guys all doing cold, all doing cold starts. So okay, hey. here we go. So and this is what go. I wanted to see. Uh, thanks for bearing with me there. So no. now what we're seeing is um, we're right back where we started. So but this time we have scaled up our app to four instances, um, but and we before we saw that we would see some requests were inconsistent, and I can do this a few times just to show that it really is working. Um, but now we can see that the demo client, it saw that there were cookies coming in from, uh, from the response from the web app. And it included the cookies in the subsequent read request. And we're seeing that now Cosmos is treating all of my requests from this demo client as being in a single session. Um, so as a single user of this app, we're seeing really good consistency for my reads and writes. Um, so I still wouldn't see necessarily really great uh, consistency if I was trying to read someone else's rights, as we talked mm -hmm. about before. But for my own reads and rights, it's, it's, it's really strong. Um, and that'll help for things like social media apps or anything where, or even just like changing preferences on a web app. If I saved, you know, some user setting, 
and then the user refreshes the page and wants to see that that setting is correct, you know, you you benefit from that. It's anything where the the consistency guarantee is read your own write. So exactly. if that scenario applies, then this is what this is what you want is you want session consistency. Exactly. Yep. Cool. So um, with that, so we showed the library. I do have to touch on a few limitations uh, for the library because it, it will help you, but it's not. Um, it can only help you so much. Um, yeah. So first, one of the limitations I want to call out is right now this library is is pre-release. Um, so we saw it working here, and it's got some pretty decent test coverage, but it hasn't uh, it hasn't been tested extensively in production yet. Um, so if any of you see that this would be a really good fit for use, your use case and, and want to try it out and send some feedback, um, by all means, uh, let me know. And uh, you, can, you can find me on GitHub uh, with the library there. The one other thing I want to mention uh, to call out is, you know, although this is a, you know, a Microsoft feed and I'm a Microsoft engineer, a Microsoft um, live TV stream here, um, this library right now, it's, it's not officially supported by Microsoft. So I wanted to make that very clear that uh, this is just a side project of mine um, that I wanted to wanted to share uh, for folks, uh, whoever could benefit from it. A couple other things to call out. So right now, only the NoSQL methods on container classes in the SDK are supported. So for some of the other APIs uh, for like Cassandra or Mongo, um, this doesn't help there. Uh, so right now, it's only the container class of the NoSQL um, API for Cosmos SDK is, is supported by this library. And there's a, there's a few more specifics on that uh, in, in the readme on exactly which methods um, will work and which ones, which ones aren't covered yet. Uh, so that's what I just mentioned. So things like transactional batches, there's, and there's a couple other resources for reading um, item conflicts or um, user-defined scripts. Um, those aren't covered by, by this library. So you, you won't get in any of the automatic session consistency benefits for those uh, today. And lastly, one other thing I want to touch on is, so this library works by keeping track of the session token that the Cosmos DB SDK most recently returned. So it can be a little bit tricky if you have a, uh, an application that's going to issue lots of writes in parallel. Um, to, and in particular, issuing writes in parallel to a single container, what happens is you have, say, three or four different writes all to a single container. Each one of those writes has a session token. It'll give you a session token back. But when you issue a read to Cosmos, it only accepts one. So that, that forces us to choose which token we want to use. Um, and what that ends up meaning is that we only really get whichever session token we choose, that write will be treated as in the same session as the future read that has that token. The other writes won't be seen as being in the same session because they're not, they don't have that same um, promise, right? The Cosmos DB only promises to give us these benefits if we pass back the exact same session token. So the way that this library um, does that is is per um, per database account and container, it just keeps track of the last one that it saw. And that's the one that it'll send to the customer at the very end. So if you really need multiple writes to a single container to all be seen in, as being in the same session, um, then to get that really good guarantee, they do have to be in sequence. You have to wait for the first write to finish before you send the next write. So then um, those all form a single chain. Uh, and you get that session tokens passed through each one of them. Um, so then they all are in the same session. All right, and that's uh, that's all I have for you today. Uh, thanks everyone for uh, for joining. Yeah, Paul, this is great. Uh, thank you very much. I'm gonna put up that link uh, for people if you wanna go and visit his GitHub repo uh, and try this thing out yourself. Uh, uh, you know, like I said earlier like that just this is great that you've created uh this this thing because uh customers just were kind of confused it's like well how do i flow a session token back and forth and uh what does that mean and when can i do that and there's all these there's all these questions around how to understand how this is a, as a consistency model works uh and how do you get that read your own right thing and you basically you've made this much much easier and more approachable 
uh, for folks and you know and they can look at your source code as well and 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 get a and get an idea of how you're managing it uh, within there and so um, I just I think this is a great uh, I, this is a great little tool to have uh, and I hope people uh, take advantage of it uh, and will use it uh, so uh, so from me to you thank you very much Paul I, I really do appreciate it and I know like most things this grew out of uh, kind of a, a need if you will and I think you you and your team kind of had a need for uh, making this thing work and, and obviously making it uh, productive for you. So, uh, so that's great. Uh, in that, um, uh, you, you, that you took what you, you know, that itch that you scratched, uh, and then just kind of share that, uh, with the community. So, um, so that's great. Yeah. It was a lot of fun to take, um, you know, our experience as a team of, of learning about, you know, some of these, these corner cases, um, uh, and being able to, you know, apply some of these really cool distributed systems concepts that Cosmos offers us um, to be able to to make this solution and share it. So my, my this is why I love working on this team. Uh, distributed systems and distributed databases is a very fun space. Uh, lots of good geeky fun uh, working in this space, and Cosmos uh, solves a lot of the problems. That comes to uh, build distributed systems uh, and, and trying to, well, there's, where do I start? It solves problems when you're trying to take and do things at scale. Uh, but then there are also uh, things as well that being in a distributed space uh, makes more complicated and Cosmos helps solve a lot of those things. Uh, and things like what you did help take that even further uh, for, for users. So again, thank you. Uh, all right, folks. Hey, I hope you enjoyed this episode. Uh, I'll put this up just one more time. You can take a screen cap. Of course, this is recorded, so you can just stop it on YouTube uh, and grab it. Uh, that is it for us uh, this week. Uh, just one quick announcement. Hey, come visit us uh, every month for our Azure Cosmos DB user group. Uh, new topics and friendly people every month uh, in there. Uh, lots of episodes for this show. Uh, I think I'm almost or at just over two years now I've been doing this show. So we're not quite at 100, but we're slowly creeping our way up there. Uh, feel free to take uh, a look at any of our past episodes, uh, a.k.a. MS slash Azure Cosmos TV live TV. Uh, Paul, thank you very much uh, once again. Uh, I, you know, I love it when the community does this sort of thing uh, for our users and, and just makes uh, using Cosmos more approachable. Uh, uh, more it's just easier to use, get started, all that stuff. So again, I thank you very much. Yeah, my pleasure. Thank you, everyone. We'll see you next time. Take care.